I'm Amelia Ransom. I'm a principal consultant in our corporate climate targets practice based here in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. The SPTI is an organization that has really uh, catalyzed climate targets over the past few years. So they provide target setting methodologies, um, criteria, accounting guidance and tools and other resources to help companies set targets that really contribute towards the Paris Agreement. So historically, it was very difficult to tell if the company's climate target was actually contributing to the transition um, because there was so much inconsistency within targets published by companies uh, in their annual reports. Whereas now, thanks to the SBTI, we have a standardized approach that allows for comparison between organizations, but also allows us to assess um, you know, how ambitious they really are in working towards the net zero targets. The new guidelines are effectively a specific uh, sector methodology um, for the sector. So SPTI publishes one version, which is a standardized um, criteria for kind of near term or long term targets. And then in addition to that, they have sectoral decarbonization approach. So in terms of transport, there's guidance available for freight, um, passenger, for aviation, um, most recently for the maritime sector. And there's currently a version being updated for automakers as well. And effectively, what a sectoral decarbonization approach is, is it's a target setting methodology that allows companies to model physical intensity um, metrics and reduction pathways that are specifically relevant for their sector and align to that sector specific pathway under a, a certain climate scenario. For example, take the aviation sector. Um, it allows airlines to set targets um, not necessarily for their scope one, scope two or scope three emissions, but rather they can set targets on reducing their well to wake emissions per revenue passenger kilometer, for example, which is a more relevant metric for their sector. The transport sector represents around a quarter of global uh, carbon emissions, and it has one of the highest reliance on fossil fuels of any other sector. Um, so to be very clear, there is no scenario in which we stay on track for a 1.5 degree pathway towards net zero without the transition of the transport sector.